Welcome to another Infographic Instant with Brian Michael. In this episode, we look at the answer to the question that we raised in our paper, how far do property prices in China really need to fall in order to throw the Chinese economy into a recession? So any shock which achieves that will not only need to clear out that 6-7% of existing growth, but then remove additional growth points in, in order to qualify as any recession in China. So recall in the paper that we looked at normal supply and demand conditions, which of course jostle property prices. Uh, we also looked at uh, disequilibrium in the property markets and particularly uh, for reasons of momentum that property price changes can take on a life of their own as people have expectations of future changes, etc. Now the third level relates to deeper structural changes that are happening in property markets and in related markets which serve property markets. So for example in credit markets and construction markets and savings markets. And the final factor that uh, plays a role in of this sudden change in property prices and growth relates to China's current debt levels. So keeping those four factors in mind, the infographic you see in front of you simply looks at the contribution of each of these four factors to any property price decrease as those property price decreases occur. So for example, if we see a 10% decrease in property prices, given the model that we developed in the paper, almost all of that change would be simply due to normal shifts in supply and demand. And that continues until roughly 20-25% change in property prices in a very short term. And if we see that change in property prices, we would also expect to see a certain amount of disequilibrium in Chinese property markets. And we would even see already uh, underlying structures changing. That that amount of price change is so rapid and so large that savers would start to distort their choices, that construction firms would start to distort projects that they work on and so forth. As property price decreases hit that magic number 30%, we would see that at that point the effect on GDP growth would be so catastrophic as to bring the Chinese economy completely grinding to a halt. What really tips the Chinese economy over the edge in this case is the effect it has on uh, sovereign debt, both central debt and uh, local level debt. We showed already that both those debt levels are dangerously high, particularly if they're accounted for correctly. Now, of course, if we look at even higher uh, changes in property prices, we see that these other factors start to play a much bigger role in uh, the Chinese economy going into a zero growth recession or even deep recession. So, for example, if we look all the way from 40% to 50% price change, very rapid change in these property prices, we would see a very large role played by deep-seated structural changes. Imagine that you're a Chinese flat owner and suddenly you woke up to find that your flat was worth 40% less than it was yesterday that would very seriously distort your savings behavior, or how much money you wanted to keep on the stock market, etc. The other factor that plays a key role, of course, is debt crisis. 40% change in property prices or higher would so radically change the ability of Chinese localities and the central government to repay loans or to provide shareholders with rates of return on property linked equities, for example, or structural products, that a lot of these structured products and investments would go into default. Earlier in the paper, we looked at some comparator economies like the US, Canada, Korea, Japan, etc. And we showed that with the onset of crisis came new structural parameters, came a new organization of their economy, if you will. 
And so the question that we have to ask in this case is, will China's new economic structures, will those structural parameters look similar to what we saw in these comparator countries, or will China follow its own particular unique road to crisis? This has been another Infographic Instant with Brian Michael.